get into the image. I'm so we're starting to record now. Are my friends reminding me here that um, the, yeah, Markdown is a big part of hacking. We were listening to the hacker playlist, and we were like, leave more, leave better, well formatted messages in your ransomware. <laughs> <laughs> because you know how to write Markdown. And Apollo is saying, you know, you know, knowing how to write reports in Markdown is a big part of the security profession. And it's actually one of the reasons I got out of uh, going down that path is because 50% of the job is writing a really solid documented report. And that means lots of code snippets and lots of, I mean, Markdown, if you didn't have Markdown and you were writing a cybersecurity, you know, vulnerability assessment, how the hell would you do that? Right. Because you want to constantly mix you cutting and pasting from the command line. You're putting, you know, your code into the document. And so, so, so yeah, learning Markdown is actually a critical skill for cybersecurity of all things, because you're going to be writing and communicating and whether it be with your victim or <laughs> your customer. Uh, if you see it, no. Okie dokie. So we are doing a video right now. Um, the last video we're going to do is how to do images. And again, screenshotting in a cybersecurity report is a thing. So pay attention. This is how you do it. Um, it's not too hard, my friends. It's actually really easy. In order to do that, we're going to have to actually create an image. But before we do, we are going to go back to our GitHub site that we should have already started. And here you'll see, you'll see that actually I had links and images before, and we went ahead and made one. We're going to make another uh, just for, for images, md-images.md. Uh, we're putting this in our notes directory. Uh, we're going to create this. And let's see, images, here we go. Um, and as you can see, uh, it's pretty darn easy. Get uh, ready. Uh, here comes uh, an image uh, link. Now, the way I'm going to do this, I'm not even going to tell you any other way to do this uh, because it's just a bad idea. Um, this is an image of, uh, what should we do an image of? Of, of Elliot. I want to do an image of Elliot. Okay, let's go find an image of Elliot. Hopefully we don't get uh, Elliot, Mr. Robot Images. Uh, there he is, our good friend Elliot. Um, ooh, I like that one a lot. That's a nice one. And uh, so I'm going to inspect element. And I'm going to find the image link. Does it even have an image link? I don't know if it does. Let's go see. There it is, current source. You see that image link right there? We're going to copy that image link out of there. Uh, copy. And... Um, we're going to go ahead and use an external image and then I'm, we're going to upload an image and I'll show you how to do that as well. So how do we here? Let's see if we can paste it, paste that image in. Um, so there's our, our Elliot image and how do I do it? Well, it, the reason it's so much like a link is it looks an awful lot like a link. In fact, if you do it without the final bit, it will see that it'll actually link to it so this is how you know it works if you click on the link and it takes you to the site um, then you know it's working we're not gonna do that because it'll throw away my changes if you know if you click on it and you or you hover over it and you can see the link down the bottom left is going to that place um, then when you hit down on it uh, on edit here the only thing you have to do to make it an inline link an inline image is stick an exclamation point in front of it so if you do that, it will actually download the image. Wow, look at that. There's Mr. Elliot. He's inside of our, we, you know, we kind of own that thing. By the way, it's, it's at this point that I, I need to tell you that if you link externally to someone else's image source like that without copyright attribution, you could be violating the law. So just make sure you don't do that. Um, rather famously, Twitter got called on the carpet for allowing that to happen. People were, you know, linking in images and they were showing up on Twitter, even though they were copyrighted from other locations that were not allowed to be reproduced in that way. It's up to you to find that out. Um, but if you wanted, if you wanted to pull in a document like that, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about SVG and image formats as well. Uh, we're actually going to do that today, right now. Um, so, so this particular image is a JPEG, uh, which means, you know, it's an image. Now that same image, if I wanted to steal that image, how could I do it? 
um, if I wanted to steal that image, I think you guys know, uh, I can go to that URL. I can, um, where is it? Uh, it's probably already copied, but we're going to get it anyway. Because it's a JPEG image, uh, we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it, paste and go, and you get Mr. Robot. Um, and so, so there we go. We got this, this great JPEG image. Um, this image is being served up by this server right here on Behance. If I want to steal it, um, and I just do save image as. By the way, this may not be stealing depending on where you're going. We're going to save it as a file name and to download this original file name. Let's change the name to Elliot um, and let's call it Elliot.jpg and we'll click on save. We're going to talk about image formats later, so don't worry. We'll get there. Um, but uh, XKCD can go away. Common Mark can go away. Stack Edit can... Sorry for the flashbang. That is not my fault. <laughs> I I mean this is a sound I guess I could put the should I put the should I put should we do it right now? I'll do it another day. I'll do it I'll do another video about how to how to make a dark mode. Um so anyway, we got this big long one, right? But but I what happens if that goes away? I want that image to be in my project all the time, right? Well, here's how you do it. So this is actually pretty damn cool on GitHub. Um you can go find the download and uh there's Elliot and you can drag the picture right into the file um oops let me see there we go you can drag it uh at least you used to be able to did they change it attaching files by dragging and dropping select or pasting them uh oh i think i have to drag it over into this window yeah i think you have to drag it into this window there we go okay so there we go it uploaded it and that is uniquely that is a unique um thing on GitHub. Isn't that cool though? Look at that. It automatically added notes, assets, blah, blah, blah. And it put that entire thing right into my repo for me automatically. And I could put here, I could put, uh, this is an image of Elliot. I would still leave the text because why? Because the text becomes, um, the text becomes a, a, uh, a part of it. So update Im MD images and um, yeah, I think it's interesting about this is if you go to the notes directory, it did not make an assets directory. That's super interesting to me. I did not know that. But the, the takeaway from this is if you're using and you will, you're going to be using Markdown a lot when you submit uh, tickets and different things to GitHub and you want to take a screenshot of the error or the bug or something like that. You just have to take the screenshot and drag it in and and GitHub will do the rest. It'll upload it for you. Um, and uh, they're tied to your repo. If you remove the repo, a prior repo too, it makes it go unavailable. Nice. Um, I, I did find it interesting though that the that the link to the video to the to the thing is not. Um, it does not appear to be. Um, it. I mean, let's let's. What is the what is the URL again? So let's look at the code. The code is get our notes assets. So th it's interesting because this is suggesting that. Um, we have an assets subdirectory under notes, but we can't see it, which I find super fascinating because that means it, it actually added it to our repo, even though uh, there is, you can't, it's, I mean, what happens if I had an assets directory? Would it put it in there? I don't know. The point is that this URL, which is a fully qualified URL, is pointing to the image in question. Um, you can also use local images. So another way to do this, um, if I were to say, uh, and this is actually what I was trying to do, um, you can upload the image this way. Uh, buh, 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 cancel. Actually, uh, commit image just changes. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do this. So you can another way you can do that. Uh, oh, this is what it is for issues. Yes, it is. Um, so let's go ahead and say, wait, where is the upload file thing? Where is it? I know, I know it's there somewhere. Where is the upload file? I there collapse file tree cancel blah, 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 blah. notes. Oh, here it is. Add file, upload file. So if you want the file to be in your repo instead of in your assets thing, you can click on upload, choose your files. You can also drag it here. Uh, but if you do choose file and go to our downloads, find Elliot and put him there. Uh, by the way, I'm using Windows because it's better for streaming and playing Zwift and games than Linux on the desktop. 
Um, so we're doing that now. It says Elliot.jpg. And now we can use what's called a local image link. So we can go to uh, MD here. Uh, whoops, wrong one. We go to images. Here we go. And go edit that file. And now instead of this, we could actually change this. I mean, I'm going to leave that in there. Uh, or you could say, or uh, we could use a local image ref. Um, now, I can put the images refs online here, but it's a bad idea. I, I'm a firm believer, um, unless you are using something, unless you kind of, maybe you want like a, a little um, smiley face or something like that in line with your text. Um, I generally think that's a bad idea anyway. I would just use an emoji for that because there's plenty to cover anything I would want to do. And, but usually when I have an image, it's some sort of screenshot or some illustration. And so I tend to put it at, on, as its own block. Um, and, and, you know, with, with the adequate line returns before and after it. Um, and if you do that, then you can actually do this instead. Um, and again, just to show you that um, you, you, the text is optional. The text is what gets shown as alternative text. Um, and you can go put this in here. Um, it, no, it's not possible. No, it's not. I don't want to fight with you about that. It's absolute crap. Um, so Elliot, uh, dot JPG. Um, I, I have 12 hour video proving it. So we're going to we'll go ahead and preview this. Um, and you see, it's the same image. The difference is, is that this image is now traveling along with the rest of my source. So if I'm actually, if I can do a commit changes here, um, I hit click on commit changes and I can clone this thing anytime I want to, I can clone RVX rub dash GH test one slash notes. And now, um, record sub modules. Okay. Wait, what, uh, is that I say notes or not notes? Can not resolve your the name? Oh, it's because it's private. Whoopsie Daisy. Uh, all right. One last thing. Su uh, sudo su dash RVX Rob dash GH. I just want to show you why you might want it in there instead of in your assets because reasons, right? Um, so clone RVX Rob GH tests one slash notes. Let's see if we can get it. Okay. So here we go. Now it's all cloned and there's Elliot. There's the Elliot picture. Uh, I'm not on a graphic system, so I'd have to just use file or someplace like that to, to check it. Uh, by the way, JPEGs are really fun places to hide confidential data. Um, yeah, you can you can put all kinds of cool things in there. You want to like hide a password or a, or, a, or like an Easter egg, you can put them in kind of JP, inside of JPEGs. It's really fun. Um, so anyway, this is this is how all those things look from here. Uh, if I were editing them from the command line, which we are not covering yet, we'll get there eventually. So. So that's it. That's it for images. Um, uh, they are pretty basic um, uh, in terms of markdown images. Now, in this particular video, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cover very briefly um, the different types of images. And um, I'm going to just summarize it at the very highest level so that you can go and look it up. Okay, because I it's just such a long topic and it's more of a design topic. It's less of a how to do markdown or even how to have a technical job contact content. This is more about this is more about design. Okay. But I do want to give since we're this is the only video that we're gonna talk about images at all, um, other than how to do an HTML image tag that's equivalent to what markdown produces. This is the only time we're gonna talk about images and when to use them and what types to use. And I'm going to do a very high level summary. Uh, I'm just going to describe it to you and you'll at least know what to look for. So the, there are two types of images in the world. There are raster images and there are vector images. Vector images are files that contain instructions about how to draw the thing, how to present the thing. And raster images are literally the data for each one of the pixelated points, the bits 
of the image. Now that that obviously is an incredible simplification of the differences between these things, but that at the highest level is the most important thing for you to take away. You don't need to be a web designer to understand the value and differences of those two things. So vector graphics and SVG images, scalable vector graphics, scalable is really key there, uh, are images that originated from PostScript, which was invented in part by uh, by Apple, who then spun it off into a company called Adobe, which you may have heard of, uh, that then went on to create printers that can create exactly perfect fonts that are scalable uh, all the way up to huge banners. And that they invented the idea of PostScript, which was, by the way, also based on SGML. Sound familiar? We talked about HTML coming from SGML. If you want a deep dive on that, it's pretty interesting stuff, but you really don't need to. All you need to know is that scalable vector graphics, SVGs, are the industry standard for images that need to scale without losing resolution. And that is any kind of graphic art that's, um, you know, presentations that have, um, you know, maybe line art in them, uh, banners kind of things, um, anything that you would do in post and, um, you know, uh, Inkscape which is a, one of the number one free available um, vector art uh, things, or uh, the Adobe equivalent. Um, why am I blanking on it right now? It's not Photoshop. It's Illustra Illustrator. Illustrator. So, you know, that's for creating line arts kinds of things. Now, you know, as soon as you take a picture of it, though, right, and you're capturing pic pixels and people are saying things like, oh, it has a bigger sensor, so it has higher resolution. Now you're talking about the bits world. You're talking about individual little dots that are being drawn, right? And now you're talking about things that have resolution, right? An SVG, strictly speaking, doesn't have a resolution. It can be drawn anywhere at any size. And that is why most people will choose to use SVGs for icons and for graphics and things like that, right? But they are a much bigger deal and they're much, much harder to render. So because, it, it, believe it or not, raster images are easier to render there because they just have to decide what color to make the pixel on the screen and they don't have to do a bunch of complicated mathematics to decide how to draw the Bezier graph curve or whatever is, is included in the graphic. So even though SVGs are uh, enabled, there's another problem with SVGs before we leave them. Um, SVGs can also be animated, and I kind of wish I had it right now. I have an animated SVG uh, that I made for Skillstack um, that has the the logo kind of pulsing, and and it actually has a musical background, and it has several uh, Easter eggs in the image that you can click on that will do different things because. SVGs are themselves uh, XML documents, uh, which are in every way compatible with, you know, they can be shown in the web by itself. And that's a very, very long separate video about XML and XHTML and all of that. Scalable vector graphics are written in XML, uh, so, so are Microsoft Word docs. Um, and ultimately that gets converted into PostScript, but you don't need to know that. The point is that they can do many, many other things. And for that reason, a lot of times scalable vector graphics are banned. In fact, last I heard, GitHub doesn't even allow them. I think they finally gave in on that. Um, because if you allow some random person to put a scalable vector graphic onto your website, you're allowing anybody who goes to that website to run code and the run code in the browser. And that causes a lot of people to be very uncomfortable. Um, it's the reason that GitHub stopped allowing HTML, certain HTML tags in the markdown. And so, I mean, even though scalable vector graphics are much, much smaller because they're just instructions, right? A bunch of text instructions. Um, they tend to be denied because it takes more to use them, uh, to render them. And it's, it's scarier because it's actually runnable code. And so you can put all kinds of things in there and, um, for better or worse. And so that's one of the reasons they don't get used. Um, in fact, it's, it's, you know, people regularly hack sites by creating an SVG and getting someone to put it on their website. Um, so there's that. <laughs> uh, the other thing you can do, but a raster image, a raster image is very innocuous. There's nothing bad about a raster image except for you have to have 
depending on the resolution, you get a bigger image because you get so many little dots in there, right? And rasterization, how many dots do I have per inch or per whatever? What's my DPI? What's my, you know, these are all design terms that I don't want to get into, but it, ultimately it's how clear is the image depending on what you're seeing. Um, 72 DPI is the standard, by the way, for screens, most screens in, in, even in 2024. So you don't need much more resolution than that. You certainly don't need 4k. If you ever try to open a 4k image on a, on most computer screens, you know, you know, it's way more. And in fact, most sites won't even let you upload, uh, files that are that large. So raster stuff gets bigger and smaller depending on the resolution. Um, you can always shrink down and maintain almost always you can shrink down uh, from a higher resolution to a smaller one and maintain, um, you know, quality, but you can't go the other way. You can't go the other way. There, there are some pretty amazing algorithms now that are coming out that are filling in the empty spaces when you're trying to make something bigger. But for the most part, you want the highest possible resolution and then you can shrink it down. And we'll see this in, in HTML when you get in, but uh, over the years, it's not as relevant as it used to be, but when, you know, when, when internet, speeds are faster now but at the time you used to be able to provide multiple different resolutions depending on uh you know what the browser supported and that's actually something called progressive enhancement which we'll talk about with pwas we'll have a separate video about what does it even mean what does progressive enhancement mean why should you care um as a designer you should think about that not just for web design but but in in, in every other way a part of your world you should think about progressive enhancement uh, well, again, separate video about that. So you want to do, what is the minimum, what is the maximum image size that's ever going to be needed? And you take a picture at that size, you take a screenshot at that size, but most of the time you're going to be shrinking stuff down because GitHub or other things are not going to let you upload images above a certain size, right? So that's a rastered image. What are the rastered image formats out there? The number one format for raster images uh, is PNG. Um, and PNG is kind of a replacement to GIF. Um, if you run across internet information about GIF that says that you can't use it because of copyright, that is outdated information. It, the copyright is no longer a thing. It's, it's, it's lapsed up for several years. So you can happily use animated GIFs. You can use the GIF format if you wish. Uh, it's just a lot efficient. The GIF, uh, the GIF format is really old. It does have a built-in bug, which allows it to be animated. Animated GIFs are built on a bug. They're not built on, they're built on a, a bug that was, uh, I, they're a total hack that was designed to allow them to kind of come in, uh, you know, to increase the resolution over time. And so by allowing that, they, the people who hacked GIFs to do animation, they use that functionality of the GIF to turn it into an animation. Uh, that was never its intent. And GIFs are ridiculously in, inefficient and bad, and you shouldn't use them unless you really want animation through GIF animation. Um, that PNG is the modern version of that sort of thing. Uh, JPG is another rasterized format that is primarily used for photographs. Um, there's TIFF, which is, you know, uncompressed whatsoever format. So GIF, PNG, and JPEG are all compressed formats. They have uh, a level of compression that makes the file sizes much, much, much smaller um, at the cost of, you know, this compression artifacts. And, um, I don't, I mean, that's probably too much geekery. You probably don't want to know much more than that, but I actually worked on the JPEG 2000 team for a while, um, working in the metadata and stuff. Speaking of metadata, we should probably mention that every single one of these image formats contains security vulnerabilities. Um, and what I mean by security in this case, is not, it's not like they're going to hack your computer. It means they're going to hack your location. Um, every single uh, PNG is lossless. I did not know. Thank you for that. Um, is GIF lossless? I don't. Th I think GIF is compressed, right? So that actually might be a reason to pick PNG over JPEG, uh, because JPEG is a compressed format, and I think PNG is lossless. That's another reason. It's a very modern format. PNG is by far. There's also um, was it web? I forget it. What's the web version? The open version of GIF? A PNG. Just use PNG. Seriously. <laughs> just use PNG unless it's a photograph, and then use TIFF. I mean, use GIF or GIF. Are we going to fight about this? Just two hundred fifty-six colors. I did not know that. Uh, Vanilla supports the Tmax over image. Did not know that. These are these are great. It's great information. So you know, if you're going to use a JPEG, if it's a for most things, you're going to be a JPEG. It's be a photo, right? Um, you know, there's is it WebG? I think it is. 
Aug. Aug is another one. There's a couple other formats that most web browsers will support, but just use uh, PNG or JPEG. I mean, really, unless you want animated GIF. The end. There's really no more to say about that. Use an SVG if you want something. So that's the end of it. If, if you want to dig into these things, these the people really geek out about this stuff. But th I was talking about privacy. Um, I think JPEG is the biggest offender here, but any camera, unless you explicitly turn it off, is going to include position data uh, and other stuff. And, you know, now with AI, with, you know, facial recognition, stuff like that, you take a picture, put it on the internet, you know, you pretty much uh, handing over privacy information all the time, even if it's your mom doing it. Um, I think the important thing to note here is you are, you might not want people to know your position, right? And by the way, there are so many ways they can analyze a picture that you've taken without GPG, without um, GPS information. They can find out where you are. It, it don't just just ask Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> That's kind of a, a meme reference. Shia LaBeouf's uh, Shia LaBeouf's flag. This is like a really, if you go, that's a fun rabbit hole. Go down that rabbit hole. Shia LaBeouf tried really hard to hide um, a project from the internet and the internet kept finding it over and over and over again, including like complex drone analogy. <laughs> it's really crazy. So um, he uses JPEG these days. Uh, what are you using, RAW? You're using, you're using PNG uh, or JPEG. Uh, world's best game, capture the flag. Yeah, capture the flag. Yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Um, anyway, people were able to figure out their location pretty easily just by looking at pictures. So, um, you know, I think, I think some of the concern about GPS information being saved in a picture is, 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 is a little bit overblown. Yes, it makes it super easy, but somebody who's really determined to find you is going to find you no matter what, if you put a picture up there publicly, period, they could just, you know, copy the thing and look up, look for where it was, uh, uh, it was, uh, El Chapo was, was captured based on image metadata. Nice. I did not know that. Um, so, so there, so there. So when you, that's the last thing I had to say about it, which is kind of a fun thing to end on. Um, and, um, you know, keep in mind that, you know, stuff should be printed. Um, I don't know if you c still care about this, but I do work with educators and some of them are still stuck printing things out and giving them to their students. Um, if you are one of these people uh, raster images, it's crazy to say this, but raster images tend to print better than SVGs in most cases if you want like a picture type thing. And I, I don't, I can't believe I'm saying that. Most of the time you would be printing out uh, like a screenshot or something like that. It, you can't do an SVG of a screenshot, right? Because it has to be a raster image. Um, and, and by the way, if you think that you got your JPEG or your PNG or screenshot to go into an SVG. It's really not. It's an SVG that's encapsulated a rasterized image inside of it. So you're still dealing with all those little bits and resolutions, stuff like that. Uh, yeah. And Zed, Zed's mentioning the same things right now. Um, when you put a rasterized image inside of an SVG, um, you still have all the same considerations with regard to rasterization and the, you know, the change in resolution and all that stuff. It still applies. It's just now hidden even more from you because it's embedded inside of an SVG file, which is a bunch of instructions, right? And um, so that is way more than you ever wanted to hear about images. That is also the only thing you're ever going to hear me say about images in the entire beginner boosts, because, you know, you seriously, you could spend, days just just studying all of this stuff um if you do like to geek out on uh you know video and and design issues you know stay stay tuned for some of my irl streams um i do a lot of uh conversations about video compression and 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 you know, you know bandwidth encoding and srt and these are more video things um, and it's, it's probably worth mentioning that there is no and this is the only time i'm going to mention it there is no method of including a video inside of a markdown file. I'm going to say it again because somebody's going to take me to task on this. There is no current method of embedding a in markdown in pure markdown, not with not without HTML, right? There is no current method of embedding a video inside of a markdown file period. So that means linking to YouTube videos as I have done on skillstack.io. Uh, the closest you could get to that, and I've seen people do this, is they will take a screenshot image of, a, of one of their videos and they will link the image, right? 
and they will turn the image into a link. And let's show you how to do that right now. So if I wanted this to go, so let's say I wanted this link of Elliot to go someplace, right? Let's say I wanted it to go to Skillstack. I don't know why. But if I wanted this link to go to Skillstack, then all I have to do, and this gets a little messy, is I have to take that image and treat it as if it were text. And then I can do the same thing as before. I can link it to, I can link it to Skillstack or wherever. Uh, iframes, iframes are not Markdown. They are HTML. So that, well, that's what I stand by what I said. So, um, so there you go. So you got the first Elliot link, and then we have the second one. But this second one is now hot linked. See how, see how when I hold my mouse over the top of it, it has a thumb, and I can click on it, and that will take me changes may not be saved. Yeah, we're not going to leave it. So see down here in the bottom left is CiscoStack.io. So the point is that this one is this one is uh, is this one hot linked? Oh, interesting. Because we did that other thing, it actually is going to show us the private image. That's cool. That's a that's a GitHub thing. That automatically made turned our picture into a link as well. That's that's we did not specifically do that. That it added that. Um, so so if you go here and you click on here, this will go to oh my god, eyes burning. Actually, I can fix this. I have I there we go. So so there um, there we go, and that is that's it. Um, so now you know everything there is to know about images on the web <laughs> and images in Markdown and how to link to use images to link to other things. Um, Pandoc supports MOV and MP4 when converted to HTML. Um, yeah, I have to look at that. Yeah, but the real question is, do you really want to store your images inside of your documentation repo? Some of you might. Um in general, when using video, in my opinion, it's better to link to video on YouTube, even though it gives YouTube control. Um, I think, yeah, you can you can definitely link, like click on files and have those files be downloaded um, from your localized location, whether it be a PDF or a movie file or a sound file. Um, any of the multimedia sorts of things need to be linked to. Um, just a reminder, make sure you watch the video about the different ways to use the web. Uh, Markdown very solidly is in the documentation uh, method of using the web. Um, as soon as you start talking about video and sound and stuff like that, you're kind of moving over into sort of the broadcast publishing uh, media sort of web usage. And, um, you know, they do kind of go together, but if you kind of think of those two things as two separate things, I think you'll survive more in the world of documentation. Um, I, of course, in your Zettelcast, and I would never, GitHub, if, if I, I have something like two, three, four thousand Zettelcast and entries, if those were all, if those all had a, just even a single raster image in them, my Zettelcast would be so big, GitHub would probably not allow it anymore. Um, so I think, you know, separation of media is a thing. I mean, God, just think about, I think I'm over, what, 3,000 videos on YouTube now. Imagine if every one of those videos was an MP4 and I had it, I was hosting it on my own server. No, <laughs> it would not be a thing. So you take advantage of the systems we have. Um, this is supposed to be a video about, you know, how to create images and image links, uh, as well as a breakdown of the image summarizes. Uh, summary. You got some bonus content in there as well, I guess. Um, thank you. And we do have one more video about Markdown, and that's related to putting maths equations and stuff like that inside of your Markdown. All right.